Hello, welcome to another lecture on the course ethics. Today we are going to talk about uh, uh, a, a platonic dialogue, a dialogue written by Plato that is called titled Crito. Now, ancient Greece is where uh, moral philosophy as such started many, many centuries back. Uh, let me give you a brief about the Greek philosophers with whom moral philosophy started. Okay, we have uh, uh, Socrates, Plato and Aristotle. These names are very uh, heard of names. Uh, Socrates was who, with whom the uh, moral philosophy began as a discourse. In fact, in certain terms, he is called the father of philosophy in the western tradition. Plato was the disciple of Socrates and Aristotle was the disciple of uh, Plato. Now, Plato, uh, Socrates never wrote anything, he has never systematized his philosophy. He has been what would we would call a common day street philosopher. He has been uh, in the sense of the phrase, the seeker of truth. The method of Socrates has been to indulge in something called dialectics. Now, a dialectic is uh, a means of uh, conversation in which the objective is the truth and gradually over a conversation between two or more uh, agents, uh, the knowledge body is evolved. Now, coming to uh, Crito. Crito is a dialogue written by uh, Plato with Socrates who, play, who plays as the main character in the uh, dialogue. Now, Socrates, as I mentioned earlier, has never written anything. He has, in fact, uh, been a street philosopher, but his disciple and uh, pupil, Plato, uh, has been an extensive system builder and he has put forth um, entire systems of philosophy which are valued even millennia after it is being written. Now, Plato has, uh, 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 true to a sincere disciple, has been, uh, has uh, wrote plays in which Socrates has been, has been the uh, protagonist. Now, Crito is one such play. The story of Socrates goes uh, this way. Socrates was uh, searching for the truth. He was a seeker of true knowledge. So, he started uh, uh, conversing, engaging young people in debates that so, something like, what do you understand by courage? Only by, in the fashion of dialectic to arrive that, well, anybody who claimed that they knew um, uh, values or any such uh, knowledge claims were actually not very sure of it. So, uh, Socrates, in the, in, 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 uh, uh, in the history of Western moral philosophy, Socrates searched for reason as the basis of uh, values. Now, uh, let us remind ourselves, at a time when uh, Socrates was uh, uh, living, there was a time which was dominated by tradition and by religion. So, all our moral values have been coming from either tradition or religion. Now, S Socrates looked for something as, something else as a basis of values. Socrates looked for reason as the basis of values. Now, uh, this new search incited a lot of thinking from uh, the story of Socrates goes this way. Uh, Socrates was, um, if I may say, a street philosopher going around looking for uh, answers to values. Now, uh, Socrates did not uh, rely on tradition or religion for answers to uh, value, for the domain of values. In fact, Socrates was keen on seeing their, uh, seeing reason as a source of arriving at one's values of uh, uh, reason being the paradigm of human knowledge. 
Now, considering this, when uh, Socrates engaged in his uh, what is now known as dialectics, there was um, upheaval in the state. The state statesmen decided and were, uh, were decided that Socrates was a threat to uh, their state, that the Socratic way was actually spoiling the Athenian youth. So, so uh, they actually imprisoned him. They imprisoned him on charges close to sedition and uh, as per the laws at that time, Socrates was not only imprisoned, but uh, sentenced to death. Now, followers of Socrates and uh, friends of Socrates, who were also wealthy and uh, well endowed, wanted to save Socrates from what many thought was an unjust act of the state in imprisoning and sentencing to death Socrates. So, uh, uh, Crito was one such friend of Socrates, who decided on uh, teaming up to help Socrates escape from the prison. Now, whether Socrates agreed to escape or not, was a question that uh, was answered eventually by time. But yes, as you could guess now, that Socrates did not agree to be uh, 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 allowed or uh, agree to be uh, a part to his, uh, to the escape plan proposed by Crito. Anyway, now more to the slide, to know about what is the basic plot of the uh, play. Now, the plot is when, uh, when uh, Socrates was imprisoned and Crito has made his way to uh, the prison of Socrates to help him or to uh, discuss with him the uh, strategy of escape. Let me read out the plot. Socrates is imprisoned and is sentenced to death by the state. Why? Socrates is accused of corrupting the Athenian youth by raising questions about morality, which are not convincingly answered by tradition. The Socratic method is the method of dialectics. Socrates incites the claimed knowers into a conversation, and in the course of the conversation, the ignorance or the in incorrectness of the knowers claims is exposed. Socrates' intention is not to defeat the knower, but to reach the truth. So, as we can see that uh, Socrates was not uh, hell-bent on uh, defeating others, or wanting to uh, show his superiority in the skills of argumentation, like the sophists of those time did. But, Socrates wanted to arrive at knowledge, which was beyond doubt. And for that, he engaged the claim, claimed knowers into conversations, which later were, was called dialectics, into uh, which are conversations, which led him to arrive, or led them to arrive that, well, there is perhaps no, uh, uh, the claim knowers also are not very sure about their claims. Uh, now, um, this is to be noted that, uh, it was not a malified intention of Socrates to defeat others, but just as a seeker of truth, and to eliminate all uh, uh, knowledge, which is uh, in the realm of doubts. Socrates, that way, has no claim to make. Instead, he is a seeker of true facts and valid knowledge. Some of the friends and well-wishers of Socrates wanted him to escape from the prison and the death sentence. Crito is one such friend, who has sneaked into the prison to gain Socrates' consent. The process of escape and an asylum in another state, would not cause any harm to the friends of Socrates. But, Socrates disagrees. Now, this is where the first moral dialogue in the tradition of Western philosophy starts. Now, Socrates is of the opinion that, well, he should not escape from uh, the prison, and he should uh, willfully take the punishment that the state has given it to him, and this on very rational moral grounds. Now, for some uh, at that time in the point, at, the, at that time in the point of world history, this was quite a novel concept, that uh, to be rational is to be moral, and to be moral is to be rational. This is the uh, dictum that Socrates propelled. Now, by uh, going through this dialogue, we are trying to see the first 
formal discourse that took place in the domain of morality in world history, especially in, in uh, the history of the Western world. So, now coming back to, uh, because the entire course would be talking about moral philosophy uh, and some of the times from the Western tradition, we need to see how it evolved as a uh, discourse. Okay. Now, uh, as we see that Socrates disagrees that even though the process of escape from the prison uh, was guaranteed and it was also guaranteed that there would be a comfortable life waiting for him in the country which grants him asylum and also that in this process none of his friends would be endangered. So, having these preconditions, one would naturally like to escape. Uh, now, mind you Socrates that time was 70 years old. So, Socrates still thinks that well, it is wrong that for me to escape from, uh, from the, from the uh, sentence that the state I belong to has given me. Now, let us look at the situation. The situation is one that I think that I have been unjustly sentenced to, that I have friends who can without any uh, uh, notable damage to them help me escape and give me, grant me asylum in a country. And three, that I would think that I have uh, many more useful uh, dialectics or uh, to engage with, uh, with people at large, even in the uh, country which grants me asylum. Having these three conditions, does not it become obvious that I escape? That I escape from a punishment which is unjust, I escape to a country which is welcoming me, I escape uh, via means that cause no harm to the other. Why should I not escape? Perhaps this seems uh, quite a, a, a queer situation. But then, let us see what reasons Socrates gave us, uh, gave Crito for uh, denying his offer of help and voluntarily embracing uh, death. And in death, he lives on till today. In death, his dialogues have become immortal. His conviction in his claims, in his uh, methods has become uh, a legend. And that is why, because perhaps he chose uh, to be, to, to live by his conviction and die by his conviction than to live without his conviction, that even now, more than 2000 years from then, we still read about him. Now, let us look at the reason why Socrates disagrees with uh, uh, Crito. Well, first, Socrates is of the claim that uh, even though the majority of his friends and people would like Socrates to escape, because all of them see Socrates perhaps as a gem, as a jewel uh, of humanity who would be, who would entire, who would encourage the uh, youth, not only the youth, but encourage everyone to uh, un unbeaten tracks of knowledge, because of his uh, dialectics and his uh, uh, unusual for that time methods of questioning. However, even though everyone or majority of uh, the people would wish that uh, uh, Socrates escape and survive for the betterment of humanity, Socrates pays no heed to the uh, question of majority, uh, to the view of the majority, even if it is well-wishers or friends. Socrates has very bluntly denied the uh, uh, opinion of majority as an opinion of coincidence, of chance, that the majority opinion can never be a determinant of what is right or what is wrong. He gives an example uh, throughout this dialogue. This dialogue would be available at Project Gutenberg, uh, at, uh, uh, at the Project Gutenberg's website. So, those of you who are interested in uh, going through the details of the uh, uh, play can access it on the Project Gutenberg, which is available on uh, the Gutenberg website. Okay. Now, coming back to uh, Socrates' claim that, well, we Claim, the claim that Socrates makes is that majority should not matter and that important decisions or value decisions, the decision that he takes has to come from reason and not from 
the view of his friends and people at large. Well, he gives us this example that if we have to learn say some art like gymnastics, would we not go to the expert to learn gymnastics rather than uh, uh, listen to the advices of all so many people uh, ready to advise about gymnastics? We would like to listen to the advice of a gymnast or of a, an expert who is himself perhaps a gymnast or has been a gymnast or who has proficiency in that field. So, isn't the opinion of that person, uh, that expert more important than the opinion of people at large? Well, if, um, most of us would prefer the expert. Now, uh, Socrates is of the opinion that, well, uh, moral philosophy is also such a view that, well, we should, where, uh, uh, the, where knowledge is arrived at by conversing with the expert rather than listening to the view of the majority. So, Socrates tries to reason with Critos, who being a warm and personal friend, wants Socrates to escape, uh, has planned the escape and uh, uh, appeals to Socrates for with various reasons that humanity would be benefited with his continued existence, that is, he has duty towards his children, that he has duty towards his friends. So, uh, with so many appeals, which Socrates fundamentally dismisses that, well, these appeals are not something that he would heed to. Now, the first claim that Socrates makes is that we ought never to harm anyone uh, Socrates escaping would violate and show disregard for the state laws. Now, coming back to uh, Socrates, first his claim was that, well, he should never harm anyone and escaping covertly or secretly is showing utter disregard for the state's laws. Now, is not it that this state that has, uh, uh, he has been a part of and Socrates has lived in uh, his state for over 70 years and uh, has been very rarely been out of this state. That whenever he has been, uh, whenever somebody is a part of a state, chooses to be a citizen or continues to be a citizen, chooses to continue to be a citizen of the state, he has tacitly approved the agreement between or entered into an agreement between the individual and the state. Now, Socrates makes a claim that, well, uh, by being a part of Athens for such a long time, he has tacitly agreed into the state. He has never participated in any civil disobedience movement and he has largely been uh, uh, happy about the state of affairs in Athens. So, this long tenure of unrebelled stay is an indicator of his uh, contentment or his acceptance of the laws of Athens. And today, when the laws of Athens uh, requires him to uh, be hanged till death, so be it, he shall stick to these laws. So, uh, by breaking, by, by escaping from uh, this uh, predicament, it is breaking a commitment, which according to Socrates is simply wrong. So, Socrates uh, tries to justify in this way also that, well, whatever uh, we, uh, uh, commitment has been made implicitly uh, or explicitly, breaking uh, it is wrong and therefore, his uh, escape is a breaking of the commitment of Socrates with the state. Now, let us look at the final claim that why uh, Socrates finds it wrong for uh, uh, him to escape. He says that the society or state is virtually one's parent and teacher and one ought to obey one's parents and teachers. Now, if we, uh, Socrates' claim is again bent on this that the, uh, now no, notice, uh, please keep in mind that this is a time when uh, city states are, uh, were very small in size and uh, citizens knew, uh, and kings were uh, and the rulers were very close to each other and were not insulated by any barriers. So, 
as much as the family, the society was also a part of upbringing a, a human being. So, this kind of an upbringing bring, entails a commitment according to Socrates. The commitment is to be honored, because one has uh, for, uh, been brought up by a society too. And so, it is almost a filial parental obligation. So, unless and until one has rebelled in principle or in ethos to the uh, ethos of or the philosophy of the uh, bringing up entity, the parent or the family or the state, then one is not justified in escaping from one's tacitly made agreement only because that agreement proves to be detrimental to one right now. This according to Aristotle would be an unprincipled way of behavior. And this unprincipled way of behavior is what Socrates stands against. He is trying to look for uh, principled behavior, that what are the principles of uh, correct behavior. Now, for him this is clearly an incoherent and inconsistent behavior, that one uh, continues to be a part of an agreement till one uh, is in gain. And the moment one is not in gain or stands to lose something, ceases to be a part of the agreement. This, according to Socrates, is clearly a, uh, a behavior that is wrong. And therefore, when Crito's offer, Crito and his friends, when they offer an escape route to Socrates, he simply refuses to join them, justifying himself in this dialogue and justifying it to Crito, that he is obliged to his state. And even though he may not agree with the sentence that is awarded to him, but if he has entered to ent uh, part to um, an agreement with the state tacitly or uh, explicitly, he is bound to follow it and that is the right way to um, uh, deal with uh, any commitments made. So, Socrates chooses not to escape and a saddened Crato, Crato leaves uh, the prison, uh, to leaving Secre uh, Socrates to be sentenced to death, which he is which he does by taking the hemlock and slowly perishing. Cut. Please take a look at the presentation slide. Uh, this, uh, if you are uh, intrigued by this brief rendering of uh, uh, Plato's dialogue, then you are uh, more than welcome to visit www. Gutenberg.org. Uh, the full text of the dialogue is available freely on this website, and there were uh, a host of other classics available at this uh, website too. Now, this is briefly, very briefly rendered the story of Socrates, the story of the death of Socrates. Now, it is for you to judge that the, whether Socrates died for the right reasons or was it a mistake. Was he justified in making uh, the, the choice of not escaping and dying, or was he not justified in it? But what is essential here to note and to carry forward, and why perhaps this dialogue and this text has been going on for ages, is because it raises a very crucial question, that is, what is the basis of values? What is, how is it, how does one decide the right course of action? And Socrates tried here to show that reason is the basis to decide on the right course of action. Reason is the basis of moral life, and sadly in this case, even the uh, justification for uh, letting it go. So, with this began the tradition of philosophizing values in the Western tradition. Values were no more that which came, around, came along from tradition, or that it uh, was uh, ordained by uh, governments or uh, states. It began to be an issue to be discussed and resolved with the aid of reason amongst people to lay the foundation of new values. This, uh, of course, the time of Socrates and Plato was time of elitism, when there was a ruling class supposed to be uh, attaining that position on the credence of uh, their achievements, both in knowledge and in the realm of war. But gradually, this grows into uh, today's democracy, where 
uh, our sense of right and wrong, the government sense of uh, permissible and non-permissible are not simply uh, taken down for either from tradition or from religion. Instead, it is put into the public fora for active debating and then we arrive at uh, our, the values that we have, the values that the state would permit or would uh, try to restrict. Now, what are these, what are the other questions that this, uh, that the uh, Socrates' dialogue uh, lays into uh, f uh, prominence? The issues raised are primarily issues that are even concerned today. This text is a classic and it is still read, uh, of course, the translated version is, uh, we, we went through the translated version, of course, it is still read over millennia over its uh, inception, because it raises some crucial issues which are still or perennial to human, uh, the human predicament or the human experience. It is basically the relation of the uh, state or the collective and the individual. How much of an obligation does the individual to have towards the state? Is there a contract? Is there uh, what kind of an arrangement between the state and the individual? By state, we could also mean the collective, the society. Where, where does this uh, balance in equilibrium lie? Why follow the laws of the state? We, whichever state we are in, whichever uh, organization we are a part of, whichever uh, order we are a part of, we tend to follow its rules. Why do we tend to follow its rules? We tend to follow its rules because uh, we have committed ourselves as a part of uh, a contract, a contract that is made tacitly because when we choose to join an uh, organization, state, institution, country, nation, uh, we also vote or, uh, for its uh, policies and we accept it. Now, this of course, uh, flies in the face of the claim that many times our choices are not real choices. The country we are born in, the religion we are born in, the uh, uh, job or the, uh, in the organization we have to take up because we have nothing else at hand are really not uh, are really not uh, the domain of choices but uh, more of a um, compulsion however now if the, even if there is uh, a compulsion do we not always have a choice either to uh, express our dissent if there is some or to suppress it now uh, Plato's claim, uh, Socrates' claim in Plato's words is to keep expressing one's uh, views and even to the peril of one's life. So, why follow the laws of the state is, well, there can be two reasons. We follow the laws of state because the laws are just and we agree with it or the laws, uh, not following the laws could be punishing us. So, what is an ideal uh, uh, relation between the state and the individual? And if, uh, coming to the third point, civil disobedience versus terrorism. Now, how do you express your dissent with the state? Do you express it by uh, being silent and uh, leaving the state, by not following the rules and uh, doing something uh, against the law? How is it? Uh, that your disagreement with the laws uh, is, can be civil disobedience at one end and almost terrorism at the other end. Interesting parallels can be drawn to the Indian uh, independence movement, where uh, Indians or our ancestors were fighting for uh, self-determination of their own country. Now, there was a, a British rule enforced by the colonizers, which to which the natives uh, our ancestors did not agree. Some of them chose to break the law voluntarily and yet follow the, uh, uh, to accept the punishment that it brings along. For example, was Mahatma Gandhi's salt law. The fact that he found the law or uh, most of the people found the law uh, immoral was justification enough for it to break it and then to uh, uh, accept the punishment that came along with it. Now, this was with a mission to uh, provoke the conscience of the ruler. The other alternatives, uh, other end of the spectrum were people like Bhagat Singh, who also uh, took up 
violent means to uh, express their uh, uh, unhappiness with the uh, present ruling class. Now, these are extreme cases of, ex, uh, of, of uh, venting out one's reaction to the laws by which one is governed in one state. So, Socrates here also in a way, in a subtle but powerful way expresses his uh, disapproval of the laws by confirming to it, but raising the flag eternally that, well this uh, state proves that by stifling Socrates' voice and later his life, the state is only uh, digging its own grave and seeing its own decline in the future. So, with this I would like to uh, leave you with the questions that Socrates' dialogue uh, raises and I, if in case you would like to uh, uh, read more uh, about the dialogue or go into details, you are welcome to visit the Gutenberg site.